Yeah, we start this Thursday edition of the Sportsman Zone by continuing to discuss the fallout from the decision by the Jamaican government not to bid for matches in the 2024 T20 World Cup. This discussion has taken several spins, including the issue of an overall lack of international matches at the country's cricket mecca, Sabina Park. In recent times, the ground has been predominantly used for football matches at the schoolboy, Premier League and international levels. The last time international cricket was played there was August 2022. The West Indies took on New Zealand. In defending the decision not to bid for the T20 World Cup, Jamaica's Minister of Sport, Olivia Grange, said her government will invest 100 million Jamaican dollars, or just over 646,000 US dollars, into the development of youth cricket. Joining us to weigh in on the discussion are Dean of the Faculty of Sport at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, Dr. Akshay Man Singh, and Chris Daring, who was the CEO of the 2007 50 over World Cup held in the West Indies. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on the New Look Sportsmax Zone. It's a pleasure to be here. We've come a long way. <laughs> we have come a long way indeed. Chris, let me start with you. 2007, you were the CEO of the 50 over World Cup, um, successfully held in the West Indies. 13, 16 years later, is it that long? Wow. <laughs> it is that long. We, we have another World Cup, now for the third time actually, and for the second time, Jamaica will not be hosting matches. How did that news take you? How disappointed are you at that? Well, it's a, it's a, I had two feelings. First, you know, very disappointed because of all the work that would have been put in 16 years ago, now is the time to take advantage of that work. Um, whatever mistakes were made in the past, you now have the opportunity to, to exploit um, what is a totally new paradigm in the world of cricket. As you said, it's 16 years. And what has happened with uh, cricket, I, I mean, T20 has been a paradigm shift. I don't even like to, to talk about cricket in general. T20 as a, as a phenomenon has been a, an inflection point in the global explosion, the geographic explosion, the commercial explosion in the world of, of cricket. And so you're now looking at, an, uh, at a, an opportunity that everybody else in the world seems to know something that we don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but when you see all those billionaires investing heavily in T20, not just cricket, T20 specifically, across the United States, you see the explosion in, con in non-traditional countries like Japan and China and the Netherlands and so on, somebody knows something. Um, and it's just a pity that we don't, clearly don't know here in Jamaica. And it would have been, it would have been good to, to, to get that experience. Um, I, I, I use the example of uh, Mukesh Ambani, who is a, a billionaire who is investing in, uh, heavily in cricket in both in India and the United States. This is the 10th richest man in the world. Um, if you could have, we could have had the opportunity to invite him here to Jamaica. Um, as, along with, you know, Meta and Srinivasan, the other billionaires who are investing in the sport uh, across um, the United States. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would have been the opportunity to ply them with some good Jamaican Roman and, <laughs> and reggae and, 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 and get them to talk and tell us what is happening, what are we missing, why they are investing millions, hundreds of millions, yeah. which makes the potential investment Jamaica was looking at seem paltry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Mansing. Well, it's a bit of a trend which is upsetting because, as you mentioned, we had the 2007 World Cup. We did not have the T20 World Cup that took place two years later. We did not have the Women's World Cup that took place in 20, was it um, 19 uh, or 18? Um, and this is another World Cup we haven't had, coupled with the fact that we don't have CPL. We don't have the big tours in cricket like India and England, which you have to bid for. It, it suggests that there is, there is a tendency to shy away from it. But let's just look at this event in itself. It's the second largest sporting event in terms of viewership after World Cup football. So you've got World Cup football, ICC World Cups, and then um, the Olympics. Now, we're not going to ever get World Cup football, and we're not going to host the Olympics, even though we contribute significantly to it. So the only big event that we can actually hold on a world stage is this event. And what comes with it is the fact that you get tourism, you get eyes, you get investors, as, as mentioned by Chris, you get that sort of viewership who can, you can sell your country to. 
and Jamaica doesn't need a lot of selling. So we're missing out on massive opportunities outside of cricket, along with missing out on the opportunities of cricket. But I, I was saying, though, the, the other side of it is I'm almost relieved that we did not put in a last-minute bid because we had five years knowing we're hosting this event to plan to get to, to mobilize the kind of resources we need in terms of personnel, people who are experienced in the global and the, in, the, in these types of events. You know, you have a Stephen Price from, who was the head of commercial operations for the Cricket World Cup who set event records and so on. Um, you have a Don Webby, who CEO of Grace Kennedy, who's also involved in cricket, um, au fait with all cricket matters and so on, served on the Cricket, w cricket West Indies, who would have been able to perhaps maybe give us some insight into how we could exploit 30 million cricket fans in the United States with a per capita income of 100,000 US. I just think maybe he might have been able to, <laughs> to point in a direction to make a return on this event. So, but, so I'm relieved we didn't do this last minute yeah. um, thing because this takes planning this to really truly exploit it. And with nine months to go before an event, clearly we have not thought about it until now. And so therefore I'm glad we haven't wasted money. I'm quite happy that you went there because one of the things I wanted to get your expertise on 2007 when the West Indies hosted the 50 over World Cup and Jamaica was one of the territories that hosted, how soon did the planning begin um, for one, the bid itself um, and by extension how it would be executed? Well, remember as actually I said, it's the cricket and the, back then, it was the 50 over was a, was a big event. Yes. It's the second largest sport in the world, and this was the third largest global sporting event. We had never hosted anything of this magnitude. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's almost impossible to explain to you with the magnitude of hosting these events, except to say the liabilities of hosting these events are incredible. Mm -hmm. You do it well, you benefit. You do it badly, their financial claims are going to be coming at you at rates. And, which, and these are multi-million dollar claims. Mm -hmm. um, so the planning had to be precise. We'd never hosted anything of this magnitude. We'd, we, we never knew the term called ambush marketing before the <laughs> Cricket World Cup. Mm -hmm. We never understood those sort of commercial liabilities. Mm -hmm. So it was a preparatory um, process that started as far back as 1997, when we first pulled together with the governments, met with the governments of the region, mm -hmm. um, Pat Rousseau, um, of blessed memory, uh, pulled the Prime Minister together, said this is what we're looking at doing. We, we had lots of lots of meetings with the Prime Ministers looking at the pros and cons. They decided to go ahead and bid to even host the Cricket World Cup. Um, we pulled together that um, presentation, took it to the ICC and won the rights in 1998. Mm -hmm. So we this didn't host until 2007. Yes. So understand the kind of preparatory for the, of, of that magnitude. But back then we didn't even have a single venue that met international standards. Mm -hmm. So we had to build all new venues. So it was a much longer planning process, but it, it just exemplifies the yeah. type of planning that has to go into yeah. place just to be able to deliver the event mm -hmm. yes. uh, and meet the host venue obligation so you don't have financial yeah. I want to make the point though, Chris, that the bids weren't offered to the Caribbean nations, from my understanding, until April of this year. Is that something from your perspective that is bad timing. No, that's not, look, it's not ideal from the perspective of you having as an individual country to be able to put in the details of your bid. Yeah. Yes. You, we had five years knowing the T20 Cricket World Cup was coming here. You do all the preparatory work knowing that you're going to bid by pulling together the kind of expertise that you need to put together this kind of business case, the research, the data that has to take place. You get the opportunity to look at what T20 World Cups are doing in other countries. Take that information, okay. um, take that information, put it into your uh, database to then prepare yourself for when the bid comes. Yes. That's how it's done. Okay. You mentioned just now when you were speaking about 16 years on and an opportunity if the Jamaican government had taken this one to correct some of the mistakes that may have been made in 2007. Might it be that some of those mistakes could have influenced or flavored the, the government? Undoubtedly, and especially yes. visible reminders that reverberate like the Trelawney multipurpose stadium. Yes. I just wanted to add that there was some foresight that was missing then too. For example, instead of putting all your resources into Sabina Park, we built the Trelawney Multi-Mistake Stadium. And multi? 
Sorry, what do you call it? Multipurpose, sorry, yeah. Um, <laughs> but the point is, can you imagine <laughs> even... Doc, Doc, you're, you're not easy. Go ahead, Can you Doc. imagine even in 2007, yeah. putting the stadium without lights? Only Barbados and Jamaica did so. Barbados learned what, how, the mistake they made and rectified it immediately. Could you imagine then putting up a monochrome scoreboard? Yeah. Which was, but was obsolete when it got here. Yeah. So a lot of the infrastructural changes that you're talking about now for this World Cup are because of decisions or bad decisions that were made at that time. So uh, I, I, I want to bring that I want I to, bring should, that to I the want also hmm? put on record and remind everybody yes. that Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium <laughs> had nothing to do with the Cricket World Cup. Yeah. That bid was, was rejected, rejected yeah. by yes. Cricket World Cup. Yeah. Jamaica, on their own, decided to still build a cricket stadium and then they hosted the opening, opening ceremony. ceremony there. But that had nothing to do with the Cricket World Cup. So that should have been an, an entire plan on its own. Yes. What you're going to do with the stadium now mm. and into the future, nothing to do with the Cricket World Cup. But what I'm getting at is that the minister is saying that it's going to cost about 400. Let's, let's put it in US, US terms. In fact, she was quoted as saying $1.62 million in infrastructural improvement, $1 million for the bid. But by saying that that's that much amount of money for four matches is not worth it, it's not right because the $1.62 million you're putting in is for infrastructural development to hold events like this and other international events in the future. You're going to have to invest it at some time if you want to have international cricket. So the bid price is actually just a million. The rest is infrastructural development, which, as I said, a lot of it is because of the bad decisions made in 2007 that we're having to rectify that right now. So if we hope to hold international cricket in the future, we still have to put in $1.67 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to a, a broader issue, doesn't it? Because I listened to you, Chris, and, and based on everything that you said in terms of the process and the amount of time that it takes to plan, it seems to me that the idea of hosting the 2024 T20 World Cup caught the government by surprise. I don't blame the government at all. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're partly responsible. Yes. Where was the opposition for the last five years? Sure, they're going to jump up now and say, hey, you, 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 you missed out. Where was the media for the last five years expounding the fact that we're hosting this event and, and mobilizing people, telling us all the research and data? Where was the private sector? who are looking at, hey, this could be an opportunity for us. There are 30 million cricket fans well, in the United well, let States. Me ask you, let me so ask you, Chris. I, I, I do not blame the government on its own. Yeah. It's all of us. Collectively as a nation, we need to take responsibility. We've missed this boat. Yeah. Let's not miss the next one. Cricket is returning. There, there's so many indicators out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it means. I just know it means something big. Yeah. All these billionaires are pumping massive amount of money into this T20 sport. Yeah. Cricket is returning to the Olympics. In 2028, first yeah. time since 1896, mm -hmm. something is happening. We and need the, to find out what it Saudis is. Saudis are coming with a massive the Saudis, the Qataris <laughs> are coming. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening. This is way ab above my pay grade. Yeah. But we need to, some, we have an incredible history and still a brand in the world of cricket. We need to make use of it. Whose responsibility is it, though, to lead the process? Because in, in my opinion, I think, we have fallen short because of a lack of quality leadership this time around. And if that leadership doesn't improve, then we're going to be in the same situation in five, six years down the road. So is it the government's responsibility to lead? Is it the Jamaica Cricket Association's responsibility to lead? I believe, like every other industry, the industry leader is who... Government have, have, governments have many things on their plate, many um, um, imperatives on any given day. Uh, pr thankfully, quite frankly, we actually have a minister of sports and culture who is actually uh, one of the few ministers that probably in the history of our country whose portfolio is her subject matter expertise. Yeah. So, we, you know, we, are, we, are, we should be uh, thankful, thankful for that. that. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that you're, you have to look out for your industry, your business. And cricket in Jamaica is under the auspices of the Jamaica Cricket Association. So you have to be out there pounding the pavement, just like the various private sector interests are out there with government lobbying for what they need and so on, demonstrating to government with empirical data why they need to be doing what they, what they are asking them to do, what are the benefits for both the sport and the country and, and so on. You have to pound the pavement. Is, does it create a problem in the politically volatile Jamaican situation that the head of a Jamaica Cricket Association may be a supporter of the opposing party? Could that cause problems? 
if from the standpoint of discussing I, a partnership I would and so on. Not. The one beautiful thing about sport, yes. it tends to bring us all together. You'll see JLP <laughs> and PNP right beside each other in the stands cheering on the reggae boys and, and so on. When they leave the stadium, the fighting <laughs> starts again. But a sport is that, I think, that yeah. unifying, you know. I, I strongly believe there's no P in Jamaica. No P. When you're dealing with Jamaica, <laughs> you've got to get beyond P. There's no P in Jamaica, no parties. The, the issue is this. Yeah. There's a, a foresight that you have to have. Yeah. Having an event like this is not just about hosting cricket. It's much like having Olympics. If you have, you know, London Olympics was a transformation for the city of London. You, it's, it's married with infrastructural development and so on. I, I was telling Chris Alfier that every time I go through the airport, I still hold him responsible because Norman Manley Airport was upgraded for Cricket World Cup. Yeah. They only got the departure section done, and the arrival section was supposed to happen by then. Never did, and 16 years on, still hasn't. Right? So there's massive infrastructural development that took place throughout the Caribbean. As we're speaking behind us, you can see all these stadia going on the screen, which are brand new. So it's a way of, of focusing hotels, all your efforts. Hotels, hotels, hotels were built. So you focus Roadways your efforts. Were fixed. Yes. So five years ago, when you heard there's a World Cup coming, it's not just about holding cricket. It's about mobilizing the, 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 the infrastructural plan for developing your country. You're utilizing and the that event. that foresight was missing. You're utilizing the event to mobilize your country towards this timeline. That's what the beautiful thing about and hosting these events. Yes. That is government's role to, to, to mobilize them. But in terms of brand building, I, I mean, I hear St. Kitts is up in arms now, and I was telling <laughs> Akshay about a story. Um, when we were hosting our World Cup, I took a delegation. And this is something we took for granted in Jamaica, and we take for granted. Everybody knows about Jamaica and our brand and who we are and so on. I took a delegation of the local organizing committees over to South Africa. Mm. And we were entering customs. There are two countries that their customs and immigration had never heard of to the point that it was not even in their system. Mm. And it took us hours to get clearance. I had to get clearance all the way up to the national security because nobody had ever heard of those countries, Caribbean countries, mm -hmm. wow. um, and it was not even in their system. Understand that. They ended up hosting Cricket World Cup. And so the benefits to those two yeah, countries, yeah. one of whom the representative was a former test cricketer. So you can imagine the teasing <laughs> we gave him. Um, but, you know, it's something that hosting these events, that's, that's what it does. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it right there, Chris. We have to go to a quick break here on the Sports Mike Zone, but we'll return with this discussion. Back on the Sports Max Zone, and we are talking cricket here and the vexing issue uh, of uh, the Jamaica um, government and uh, the Cricket Association um, under some pressure for not bidding for hosting matches at the 2024 T20 World Cup. And uh, it's one of just a few countries in the region that did not actually bid. Later in the show, we'll get a St. Kitts and Nevis perspective as well. But at the moment, we have uh, Chris Daring, who was CEO of uh, the Cricket World Cup 2007 Red, held right here in the Caribbean, and uh, Dr. Akshay Man Singh, who is Dean of the Faculty of Sport at UWI Mona. And uh, gentlemen, we discussed in the first segment uh, what's on the table here as far as um, the non-bid is concerned, where, it, where it's left us. And Chris made the point earlier on that given the late staging of... Um, of the, the, the whole issue being put on the table, he's actually happy that the, the Jamaican government turned it down because it would have been a missed opportunity to maximize on something that would have been good Correct. if it was properly um, planned for. Exactly. Um, you know, one of the things that irks me sometimes when I talk about things like viewership of cricket, <laughs> and I'll say, hey, you know, it's a two billion, two billion viewership, in the US, it's 30 million um, cricket fans. People will, out here will go, you dismiss it and say, oh, but it's mainly Indians. Mm -hmm. If it was mainly Americans, <laughs> <laughs> what do I care? Mm -hmm. If they have spending power, if they are a large economy, India is the fifth biggest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the third, if, you, if you look at the 30 million cricket fans in the United States, Let's say it's an average per capita of 60,000. My elementary maths tell me that's 
what, six billion in, yeah. in spending power. Yeah. What do I care whether it's mainly Indians or Australians yeah. and, and yeah. English and West? I yeah. don't care. Yeah. Uh, and the digital world and the globalization makes now it much more easy to mm -hmm. access and exploit those mm -hmm. economies. Yeah. I can't, I don't know how to do it, but we must have those people yeah. here in Jamaica yeah. who can tell us how. Do Dr. Mansing, a point was made a few days ago when we countered the argument of supporting a bid and not supporting mm -hmm. a bid, that there are some fans who feel that Jamaica would have you know, just gotten a, a few matches, uh, probably not having uh, a group that involved the West Indies. And uh, as far as they're concerned, uh, we've not missed much by, by not, not hosting this. Well, I mean, that's to some extent echoing what Chris said, that if you haven't started working on it five years ago, then maybe it's, it's not yeah. worth it. But, but, but when you bid, you're not guaranteed absolutely. to get what you're bidding for. But then it also depends on how the bid goes, what it's about. Now, yes. just think about it. The, the hotel rooms we have, mm -hmm. the infrastructure we have, even for the last World Cup, West Indies were, 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 stationed, were in Jamaica. That's where they started. The home team was in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the process of allocating the matches are, but the point is whatever you have, you've got to make it big. Mm -hmm. Now. To make it big, you put a party around cricket, so to speak. I mean, the CPL recently, not only did people flood in to watch cricket, but they had Sean Paul. Last year, they had Beres Hammond, and uh, with Marshall Montana and so on, entertaining people. So you make it an event that people want to go to, whether they're interested in cricket or not. Now, if you happen to get an India, or you know, if you can maximize on West Indies, England, all, all the better. But the event, the value of the event, how you market it should be attractive enough that people say, hey, I want to go to Jamaica. I've always wanted to go to Jamaica. Here's a chance to watch some cricket and, 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 and so on. Now, the cricket fans, especially in the North America, are from every country of the world. So even who, no matter who you get, if you target them, you can still make something out of it. But is, but it, is, is, it, is it that the USA having venues to stage the mm -hmm. World Cup would take away some of the prospects well, see, of, so, yeah. of fans traveling from the US to Jamaica? Fair enough. I mean, once again, it depends on what matches they get, what matches yes. we get. Yes. But there's the, the added enchantment of Jamaica that you want to market as well, or any other country yes. for that matter. Mm -hmm. Our connectivity is better than any other country in the, in the, in the region, with North America especially. Our proximity is closer than anybody else, so the flights are shorter and so on. And there's, there may be somebody in that, one part of the than USA. Than any other cricket playing yeah, nation. Yeah, other, other other because the Bahamas are next door. No, I'm talking about the bidding nations. Okay. You know, those who are likely to hold the, okay, hold yes. the, hold the, yes, the World yes. Cup. Bahamas are not part of cricket. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but but they, they, they play cricket. Is they they, they play in ICC yeah. <laughs> qualifying tournaments. By themselves. No, that's Bermuda. Bahamas, well, Bahamas is also. The Bahamas, yeah, Bahamas, yeah, they are playing. But, and, but, uh, well, no, but that's not the point. Just to add to what you're actually saying, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I've been involved in the hosting of a global sporting event. Yeah. Nobody can tell me that Jamaica, that ICC and Cricket West Indies are not bitterly disappointed <laughs> yes. that Jamaica yeah. is not a part of and, hosting. And Johnny Grave said us Because as he the told challenges us of hosting an event of this magnitude, Jamaica has the room stock, mm -hmm. the airlift, the expertise, mm -hmm. personnel, you need resources. Well, Cricket West Indies said that they extended the bidding deadline I, I, three times I, the in an effort to get Jamaica to, to, to the get proximity. Jamaica. Proximity. Do not underestimate that proximity to the U.S. Mm -hmm. because in logistics, you're trying to move teams in between venues. Yeah. In our case, those venues happen to be countries. Yes. You want the countries to be as close as possible together. You have player issues to deal with, yeah. um, transportation issues to deal with, television equipment to move around the region. But two, but two additional things, Chris. One is the road infrastructure compared to the last World Cup. Uh, it's uh, such that you can have people on the North the Coast no coming all in. All the North Coast but hotels now coming to play. In the perspective that what I would have liked to have seen in 2007, for example, is to have people stationed at, in Ocho Rios and, and the North Coast and told that, listen, we're going for cricket to, to, to Kingston. Don't have breakfast because we're on our way. Lindsay is going to get a bus. Yorton is going to get a bus. Bogo is going to get a bus, and they put on a breakfast for the, ho for the, for the guests. Yes. And on the way back, likewise, dinner is put on, and you get the whole country involved. Yeah, but of you're, course, you're, you're um, a thinker, Dr. Mansi. Of course, all the, all and, the little and bars, bars and restaurants <laughs> along the way. <laughs> would, would benefit. So it's a matter of how Along you do the that. way, going, and, uh, and even worse, on the way yeah. back. <laughs> but then, um, so but then my thing is, you know, you get two Bollywood directors into Jamaica. Nowhere is sweeter to, to shoot a film than Jamaica. You need to get people to come here and see because otherwise, like what Chris said, people don't know the country. They've heard the of other it. thing, you know, actually, the, the 2007 World Cup, we were kind of robbed yeah. because India and Pakistan got 
eliminated early. So the Caribbean has never seen what we have seen. I worked in the South Africa Cricket World Cup. When India qualified for the final, all the tickets had already been sold out, you know. Mm -hmm. Jumbo jets, private jets, mm -hmm. arrived in, I'd never seen anything like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are all multimillionaires, very wealthy people mm -hmm. that came in droves, mm -hmm. parked outside Joburg Wanderer Stadium, wow. offering people insane amounts of money for their ticket. I was offered 20,000 US for my ICC pass. <laughs> <laughs> I did not sell it I, <laughs> I because I, I could not sell it. it. Yes, but, yes. you know, it was a kind of, mm -hmm. it, you, I, I, I saw that and I was going, I went, whoa. Mind-boggling isn't it's, the word. It, it's mind, yeah, so, so, but that is 16, that is no, actually that is no, 20 years ago, yeah, yeah. South Africa Cricket World Cup. Yes. Where cricket has gone to know and all proximity, mm -hmm. I just, there's something we just don't know. No. <laughs> I, I just want to make the point as well because my understanding is that the bid proposal um, by Jamaica, of course, it never went in. Um, is that they would have one group of matches plus a semi-final and that there was a specific request to have the group that India would be involved with. Yeah. So I just want to, Listen, to, you, to put that out there. If you have one India match, yes. one, mm -hmm. I don't care against who. Yeah. <laughs> um, but why bid just for the semis? We could have hosted the right. final we have that kind of infrastructure. And I know commercially mm -hmm. it would, because the final was going to be in the, in, in the Caribbean, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. As far as I am on the yes. yes. As far as we understand yeah. now, Barbados, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago are also the front for the runner, final. The front runners. Yes. But um, what I'm, what I'm telling final. you is that I believe, my opinion, we would have had an excellent chance of the final because if they're, if they're thinking India is going to get to the final, mm -hmm. the proximity to the United States. The airlift between mm -hmm. us and, and, and the United States, the hotel, number of hotel rooms that we have, all of that would have factored prominently in where the final goes. Know that we have missed this opportunity, gentlemen. Where do we go from here? Let's not miss the next boat. We have to start planning. I'm very heartened by the, the, the funding that the minister has said that he's going to commit to youth cricket. It needs to be part of a plan. If cricket is part of the the policy plan going forward and hosting cricket events, then get the people that you know have experience in it, have uh, all the international connections um, to, to, to find out what's going on. I'm sorry we, don't, we didn't get the opportunity to invite all those people to Jamaica for this event to, to ply them and, 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 get, and get them to talk. Mm -hmm. But we need to plan. And we need to plan knowing that cricket is now going to be an Olympic sport. Yes. There are 20 teams next year in the T20 World Cup? Yes. Are you telling me that Jamaica wouldn't be good enough to get there at some point in the future, 20, 25 and, years from now? And, and Are you telling me Jamaica won't be good enough to get to the Olympic Games? Certainly there's not going to be a West Indies mm -hmm. at the Olympic Games. They can't yeah. be. They can't be. Yeah. Yeah. So we have something to look forward to, to plan towards, yeah. to I exploit. Yeah, I gathered from Dr. Mansing's previous pronouncements, though, that he has an overall worry about the current administration's attitude towards cricket? Well, uh, so I had, I had mentioned that it's not just a matter of money. Yes. But, you know, the, the, the Talawas won last year in, in the CPL. Yes. The Scorpions won the Super 50. Yes. The under-19 won the 50 over and the, uh, and the um, three-day competition. Mm -hmm. But we didn't hear any congratulatory me message or any posting or something about it. So to me, it was the attitude. Now, on the flip side, we're hearing that there's $100 million or whatever to go towards youth development. Mm -hmm. The point is this, that... Cricket arguably has made more money for an athlete in Jamaica than any other sport. So yes, our top athletes have made a, runners have made a lot of money, but how many of them? Mm -hmm. Over the years, cricket has sustained many livelihoods. And we have that talent pool, which we, if we don't invest in, we're going to lose that livelihood. Number two, half of the West Indies population is in Jamaica. Therefore, it's, it's wrong for the cricket West Indies as, as well as, as the Jamaican government to ignore Jamaica because it's half of the population base. But going forward, you know, the, the development of cricket is towards both things, to, to promote Jamaica as a cricketing country, but also to provide employment opportunities in the world scene for our talented Jamaican cricketers. And both of those seem to be diminishing at rapid, rapid rates. And that was my concern. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's very worrying because a, a call was made about 
you know, even seeing the current West Indies stars playing in Jamaica, players like Fabian Allen and, and Robman Powell, um, there is a, a period of this generation of, of youngsters now that would not have seen these players live. Well, I'd said a whole generation of young, well, a whole generation of Jamaicans have not seen 50 over cricket live in Jamaica, the, the Super 50 cricket. Yeah. I can't remember when last it was held in Jamaica. Wow. But it was certainly more than a decade and a half ago or so. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, that competition, which is a cricket West Indies competition, has yeah. not come to Jamaica yeah. for, for over a decade. Mm -hmm. So, the, that's the point, that you're not seeing your stars. You're not being able to create that cricket culture. Mm -hmm. So, going back to, to, to the statement, you know, one of the things that had I, I sort of made my curiosity uh, arouse was when it was said that stakeholders were consulted and collectively decided that we should not bid for this World Cup. Bid for this World Cup. I would really be interested to know who these stakeholders are, what was the discussion, when was the discussion, and what were the conclusions? Oh, what, was, what was presented to the stakeholders? Well, well that's the point. You know, yeah. what, somebody, because that didn't come when we rejected the bids initially. That's just come out recently, yeah. Yeah. that stakeholders were consulted. Yeah, so, so I want some details. So, Ricardo, the information that you've gleaned about the nature of the bid and what it entailed, who would have produced that bid? That bid? Well, so initially... Um, the proposal would have come from the Jamaica Cricket Association yes, yes. to the government of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the, the process. Um, of course, my concern, and you asked that question at the top of the show, in terms of timing, because I wondered if April, for example, when the bid went to the government, would have been enough time mm -hmm. um, to put in place anything substantial to say that we can really benefit from this. But I think Chris has addressed that point yeah. in that... That's dotting of the I's and crossing mm -hmm. the T's. Yes. We, we've known for five yes. years. We shouldn't have gotten there. Yes, we, we, we can do all the planning or run all the numbers. Then when mm -hmm. you get the detail, you yeah. drop in those two, <laughs> you know... We should have been ready. Yeah. In, yeah. in yeah. April, yeah. we should have been ready for when the official documentation came yeah. from Cricket West Indies or came from the JCA. You know, and we would clear. have had a policy yes. about whether or not we want to host any major events. Yeah. Um, what, you know, what are the, the parameters of that policy? What do these events have to, have to achieve, meet, you set yeah. the objectives? You, you said something earlier, Chris, recognizing the fact that governments have a lot on their plate. And obviously, government has to consider sport as just one facet of so many things. And that they have to within sport. Okay, <laughs> yes, that they have to um, govern yeah. for an entire country. So um, it, it just leads me to, to put the question to you, gentlemen, that um, is there too much pressure on the, on the government, given the fact that they have so much that they are responsible for, that it, 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 it's, it's hard to be too critical of them if they did not pursue this project as, as you know... Priority? As, as, a, as a priority event yeah. or as you know vigorously as we well, think see, they could have governments have a job to govern yes and they've got to look short term medium term and long term so yeah. five years ago it would have been a long term project yes but then and that's why i'd be interested to know what for example happened in cabinet when it was discussed in cabinet okay because you have a tourism budget you have a tourism marketing budget mm. but here you're going to get two billion eyes watching jamaica how much is tourism going to pay towards that because you don't have to put in those many ads necessarily because you're getting free advertisement for your country by hosting it. In other words, it has to be a concerted and coordinated government move. So yes, GC has to provide the, the cricket specifics and so on. But as a country, now to hold an event like this, a mega event, not many countries get that opportunity. So the government, that's why I would like to know what the discussions were okay. in a, at a cabinet level because a collective decision. So put up your hand and say, yeah, we discussed it and we decided we're not gonna host it, that's fine. But let's know the details of what turned you away from it. Mm. I, I think Jamaica has a, a bit of a disadvantage. Actually, I know we were talking about it earlier. The fact that we are big and we do have other more pressing matters. And so we, our leaders tend to be a bit far removed from, from the execution at, at the lower levels and so on. You know, you have a St. Lucia, for instance, that, you know, the Ernest Hillier, brilliant gentleman, very, in, you know, the kind of intellectual horsepower that those countries have that have been involved in cricket, because Ernest was the head of their, their uh, local organizing committee in Cricket World Cup, and he's now Deputy Prime Minister, Minister. virtually the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. You have um, uh, Mayor Motley. You don't get more intel intellectual and intelligent than that, who was the head of my security <laughs> operation for Cricket World Cup in 2007, who's now the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. So you had these people who I think were sitting right at the, the, the top of the, the power yeah. 
history, base, yeah. also understanding uh, exactly what the event could bring and how they could try and exploit it. I, we probably are, are missing that um, in, in, our, in our scenario. I don't, as I said, it's difficult for me to, to simply just throw the, the, the stones at the government because when I think about where the, the media has been, yeah. Where is cricket associates? I don't, though, be, don't get defensive. No, man, I'm not getting defensive. Because I'm just saying leadership is missing somewhere. We, ju we I, know I need agree, to identify where that leadership is missing. I, and I, I totally agree, and I, I accept that point. But, but I always think that, hey, the leadership of your, of your particular industry or your particular business mm -hmm. has to lead the, your interests yeah. and get in front of the government. Uh, you cannot tell me that if a proper business case showing the financial, economic returns and plans on how we're going to get there and get them and account for them, the social returns of hosting, the economic returns nationally of hosting, the political returns of hosting, all of which would be done in a normal business case to host these events. If a proper one was put together and put before Prime Minister Holness, um, um, Nigel Clark and Babsy Grange, that they would have said no. Because yeah. it, it, Except you know, that it I just believe that a major role in that is that of the government to drive that Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. So, you know, it, yeah. so it, it is a, mm. maybe a chicken and egg, yeah. but mm. I, I just believe that, hey, at the, my bottom line, yeah. we're missing something big. Mm. I don't know what it is, and I don't know what, but somebody knows something. Mm. And we need to get one of those billionaires here to tell us why they're investing so much money yeah. in, in T20 cricket. Well, well, gentlemen, we've got to leave it there. Certainly a, an engaging discussion that we've just had, Dr. Akshay Man Singh and uh, Chris Daring. And uh, we will continue this discussion, and we have a lot more to come on the Sports Match Zone after this. Thanks, then.